You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks. I know you've got a lot on your table this morning. Uh, thanks so much for making time to join us and for your questions. Um, Senator Mullen, you're next, please. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Is it Sullivan? Is that right? Uh, where do you live? Where do you live? South Carolina. And city? It's a small village called McClellanville. And, and so how much time have you spent in Indian country? How much time do I spend doing what? How much time do you spend in Indian country? Quite a bit. Quite I used bit. to live in Idaho. I have projects. I, I was just out actually. Are you tribal yourself? I'm not tribal, no. Not? I'm Cherokee. Uh, I lived in tribal land my whole life, and I can tell you, uh, we start talking about seven generations. Uh, my kids are probably close to that. Uh, we live in Cherokee Nation um, inside the reservation my whole life, right? Uh, you, you bring up Wilma Mankiller and talk about seven generations there, and you really you know, bring up a lot of interesting points, but you forget one thing, that tribes have been fighting forever to get the government out of the way. We don't need more government involvement. In fact, that's what led us to Oklahoma to begin with. And we've been fighting for water rights forever. And I can assure you, your definition is saying that all waters belong to the United States of America. Is that what you're saying? I mean, because that map you showed up said that everything flows eventually into what you consider a navigable body of water, and it's all connected. And so by your definition, you're saying that all waters belong to the waters, uh, to the waters of the U.S., right? I'm going to back up a step there. Firstly, all the water... No, no, I, did, I, I don't need to back up. I'm just asking you, is that your, what your definition is? Well, my definition is that waters of the U.S. Are all tied together. Is that, that's basically what you're saying. That's um, I, I, my def, I, from a scientific perspective, waters I'm are tied together. For, okay, so, I'm not, so all waters belong to the U.S., so there is no private water rights. So all this land rights that we've been fighting for, farmers have been fighting for, travel has been fighting for, actually it doesn't exist because under your definition, it all belongs to the, to the United States, and we should all ask permission to the United States before we can even water our cows in a pond. Yeah, no, not at all. And I think you're misinterpreting not no, what it, I'm saying. It, it, but underneath your broad and definition, saying. underneath your broad definition, you're saying all waters belong to the waters of the U.S. No, I'm not here. I'm here as a scientist saying waters are connected. Well, you're also I, giving your opinion, too. No. Well, when you start talking about women, man killer, and you're saying you're talking, talking about seven generations, and you're doing all this, yes, you are. You're giving your opinion about this in a place that you haven't lived. And I, I take a little bit of offense to it to some degree. Uh, because you keep talking about all this tribal like you're trying to protect tribal land, and you forget the simple fact that we have simply been fighting for water rights forever on our traditional lands, and we really don't want the federal government getting involved in it. That's not what we want. Uh, we want to be able to use our water without having to ask permission. And if you connect all the waters of the U.S. and you put underneath a broad definition of saying that everything's tied into that, then that's exactly what it would lead to. It would exactly, if you say it, all of it belongs underneath waters of the U.S., everything we would do on tribal land from then on would be us required to have some type of par permit from, from a big overreaching federal government. Would that be fair to say? I'm waiting for you to finish so I can respond. Go ahead. So I think I have a couple points to make. First of all, I absolutely respect where you're coming from. I have the the work I'm presenting today, and it's part of my written testimony, is with tribal partners who wrote these papers and are, we're working together. So these are not just, you know, you're talking about opinions, but these are points that we are deriving together in collaboration. Um, and the position I have here is as a scientist, understanding how these waters are connected and how alterations of that connectivity can impact waters on tribal lands but you're saying they're context. all connected. They're connected. Are, are you not afraid of the overreach of the federal government at this point? Because I am very skeptical. That, that is beyond my, the, the, my role here is as a scientist. I'm not talking. Underneath the Clean Water Act, we originally said that it was navigable bodies of water. Navigable bodies of water. The reason why we said the original na navigable bodies of water, and we started talking about the 404 and the 402 permits, was because we wanted to limit the scope and the reach of the federal government. We came in and redefined that to the waters of the U.S. Uh, and that specific said the adjacent because we were afraid of the federal government overreach mm -hmm. of going too far in country. Mm -hmm. Now we're saying that everything is tied into. There's 72,000 farmers in Oklahoma, 72,000. I'm one of them. 
My, my, my family have been, have been raising cattle on the same lane we've been to since we were forced to walk there in the mid-1830s. And it is very difficult to say that now, from now on, are you gaveling me down and everybody else has went farther than me? No, I, I did not go like that, okay? I went. The gentleman before just to, me no, spoke just to remind, just to, Excuse me. Just to remind you that your time has expired. Continue. Continue, okay? I'm good. All right. Um, please, please uh, go ahead. Thank you. Um, 